What we're going to be looking at here is petty cash and a bank reconciliation. And for a reconciliation, we're going to be looking at the end of the period here, July 31st. And what we're going to have to determine here is what we would report on the balance sheet here for the correct amount of cash uh, between our petty cash fund here and the reconciled amount that we're going to come up here for with our cash account based on this bank reconciliation. So let's go down and look at this bank reconciliation. We have a schedule here. Now there's two ways here to determine the correct cash balance that we should have at the end of the period. We can either do it the balance through the bank statement here or a, or a balance per the depositors books here. So we have two different ways to look at it and we're going to be looking at it through the balance per the depositors or the company's books in this case because this is the up additions and subtractions that are going to affect our cash here. But before we do that here, what we I want to note here is this balance per the bank statement. Uh, we would be adding one item here where we have undeposited receipts of cash on hand. And in this case, I had $620. But uh, this $620 shown here does not include the petty cash fund. It's just sitting here as separate cash away from the petty cash fund. So let's look here at how we uh, calculate our balance per the depositors or the company's books here on 731x1. So per the books, well, we had $19,294 here. But then there were some additions and subtractions here based on this bank reconciliation schedule here. And the first one would be up adding here the bank credits and collections not on the books. And in this case, there was $2,080 for a note or a loan that was collect, uh, collected here by the bank and credited to the uh, company on the bank's behalf. On the, on the company's behalf here, but the uh, customer sent the $2,080 directly to the bank, so the uh, company did not have this recorded here on the books. And then we'd add in, uh, uh, add some book errors that understate the book balance. Well, there was none in this example, so we put down zero here. And then we'd be subtracting out any bank charges not on the books. Well, in this case, we had a $40 bank charge here that the bank charged the company. And then we'd also be subtracting out any book errors that overstate the book balance. And in this case, we had a miswritten check here that was recorded wrong, and we have to subtract $36 for that check. So, uh, so uh, totaling up or netting our amounts here, we start out with the 19th thousand two ninety four netting in or adding in our additions and our deductions here we come up with a balance here the correct cash balance per the bank reconciliation statement of twenty one thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars again that's at the end of the month here at per our bank reconciliation statement here uh, a bank reconciliation schedule here of and that would be twenty one thousand two ninety eight so again uh, this is this is what the correct cash balance here is per this bank reconciliation and what we have to ask ourselves what amount of cash should be reported here on the balance sheet here and then again uh, the items that did affect our cash here on the balance sheet were these additions and redu additions and reductions here the this balance per the depositors books so let's go up here and look at our cash account here now this is the regular cash account and we're going to look here in a 7 1 here through the 731 time period here so uh, we started out here on July 1st the 7 1 with a cash amount here um, debit amount here of twenty thousand one hundred dollars and then for the period we had uh, receipts here of seventy thousand dollars and then we uh, had uh, that we would have debited here and then we would have credited credited or reduced our cash here for cash de disbursements here of seventy thousand eight hundred and six dollars and for our sake of our argument here in our example we're going to have that's going to include these petty cash transactions where we actually set up our petty cash fund here for four hundred dollars and then we had to replenish it here for 376 and then we added to our increased our cash petty cash fund here by two hundred dollars so it is included here in these disbursements here to our regular cash account so then uh, netting those amounts here we come up with the nineteen thousand two hundred ninety four dollars that was the uh, uh, cash amount here before this bank reconciliation at the end of 731 and then for a bank reconciliation remember we had that two thousand eighty dollar note which we would um, that received here by the bank in behalf of the company here so we would debit our cash or increase it here by two thousand eighty dollars and then we'd credit or reduce the cash here by forty dollars for the uh, bank expense that was charged and then that uh, correction here on that check for thirty six dollars so what we ended up here with a cash amount 
here, $21,298. Now that was what we called the correct cash balance per this bank reconciliation here on 731. Now let's go over and look at our petty cash and this is uh, is going to be like in a cash box here and so this is a separate fund here separate from our cash account over here so um, we just say for example we started this petty cash fund up here at during the during that July period so we would have debited hit for four hundred dollars and then our cash account would have been credited or reduced for four hundred dollars so we uh, transferred cash from our regular cash account up to our petty cash account and then for the period there were three hundred and seventy six dollars paid out of this petty cash fund the cash was actually taken out here and it had to be replenished in this case so what we do here is we would credit cash here for 376 and we'd go up here and debit or increase our petty cash fund for 376 but what I want to note here is that we had these three hundred and seventy six dollars of cash taken out of the petty cash box or fund here and and that would have would, would credited here, been out, and then we would have debited our petty cash fund here for 376. Well, I, what I want to note, note here is that this entry that's made here where I show the $376 credit and the $360, $376 debit, those aren't actually recorded here. All we re record is what we would actually have in this fund when we set it up. In this case, it was $400. And now there's one other thing here that we're going to do. We want to increase this petty cash fund because it there just doesn't seem to be enough in it. So in this case, we're going to increase it here by $200. So what we would do here is we'd go down here and out of our regular cash fund, we would have credited it for $200. And then we would have actually debited our petty cash account here for $200. So the only uh, items that actually show up here as for debit amounts is the $400 for the initial amount here and then the $200 to increase it. So what we're ending up with here is $600 in our petty cash fund by that $200 increase. And that this uh, um, amount here on the balance remains the same here regardless. We It would remain the same here at $400 until we increased it and we increased it here by $200 so it's sitting here at $600. That's what's actually recorded here um, in this petty cash fund. So let's go and look here how we would report this cash here on the balance sheet. The, how we report our cash again on this balance sheet. So remember here we had $21,298. That was the correct cash balance per the bank reconciliation here at the end of the month of 731. But then we also have this petty cash here of $600. That's up over here. This petty cash. It, this is what's sitting here in this petty cash fund as far as our records here is the $600. So what we would do here is we take in that that correct cash balance here per the reconciliation $21,298. We'd add what's uh, our petty cash here that the amount, uh, account amount that remains constant here in, of $600 since we increased it by that $200 amount. Add those two together and you come up with $21,898. Now that's the amount here that should be recorded on the balance sheet here. So just to review what we've done here, we went through here, we started out with our um, cash account here at the beginning of the period here, uh, 7 1 here, um, and that was what was recorded here on our balance sheet. And then we had some cash receipts, some cash disbursements, and then we come up with what was on our balance sheet here. Uh, that would be the end of the uh, period here. But then we had to make some corrections based on our bank reconciliation items that we wouldn't have recorded here on our balance sheet in our cash account here. So we made those corrections and then we come up with the correct cash balance here of 21 thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars and then we had to go over here to our petty cash account here and we had to determine in this case we set it up here for four hundred dollars but then we had to determine any additions or subtractions here that are uh, increases or decreases here in our petty cash in the case that we had too much petty cash we would have credited our petty cash account here and debit or increase our um, regular cash account here but in this case we had to increase it by two hundred dollars so we debited our petty cash here for uh, uh, $200 and then we would have credited or reduced our regular cash account here for $200. And re regardless, we come up with the meaning balance here of $600 and that is what's recorded here on the balance sheets when we determine our correct cash or our 
what should be recorded here on the on the balance sheet here. We had the 21,298 which was the correct cash balance here per the bank reconciliation plus this petty cash here of $600 gives us the total amount here of $21,898.